Good morning to you on this Wednesday morning. We continue our consideration of the spiritual gifts and of our role in the body of Christ. So we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 20 today. But now there are many members, the one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So Paul is reminding us that we need each other. One member of the church can't say to another, I have no need of you. We need each other. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't really need you, or the eyes cannot say to the ear, well, I don't really need you. It's only when every part of our body is working together that we function in the way that we can, that we optimally function. If there's bits and pieces missing or they're not working, well then we are not functioning as well as we can. And that's the same in the Christian church. We need all the members working together. And we need to honor each other and we need to realize that the ones who maybe we respect the least and the ones we think are not important are really more important than we think. We know that in our own physical body, I like to say to people, cut off your big toe and then try and walk, try and balance. You're going to find it very difficult. We don't pay too much attention to it, but it's there. It's there for a purpose. God has given us every part of our body is there for a purpose. And when it's fulfilling its purpose and it's in its right place and it's healthy and functioning, then we are doing well. And that's what we need to realize, that we need each other and we need to help each other and if one is suffering, then we all suffer. If one is rejoicing, we all rejoice. If one is honored, we are all honored. We are so intimately intertwined together. And that's the way God has purposed it to be. So let us understand what this means. And let us live appropriately. And let us realize that it's when there's divisions and when all the different members of the body don't work together, that's when we get into strife. And that's when things don't work well. So let's try to keep everything functioning the way that God has intended it. Let's be grateful for each other. Let's honor each other. Let's bless each other. And let's work together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we so thank and bless and praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you use such a simple illustration that we can understand our physical body. We know that we need all the parts of our body, that you have placed them there for a reason. And it's when they're working together and when they're doing each part is performing its duty, then everything goes smoothly. And it's the same in the church. So we thank you for all of our members. We thank you for everybody that comes. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us all to serve in the positions that are given to us and that we would do it with an attitude of gratitude, always giving you glory and honor, always realizing that above all things we are serving you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you for this new day. We ask your blessing over this day, your blessing over our loved ones near and far. We pray as your word directs for our governments and those in authority. We pray that you give them wisdom and understanding and help them to execute their jobs faithfully. They're under a lot of pressure from different areas and different things, Lord. So would you just help them and we ask that you would. We pray, Lord, for unity. We pray that the world would unite against all the evil that's out there, against the evil and corrupt governments. We pray, Lord, that the government would stand in the Ukraine and be able to withstand the enemy, we pray that you would defeat the enemy, crush the enemy, send them home defeated and broken. Lord, we pray for freedom. We pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those who have lost so much. We pray for those who have no hope. We pray, Lord, for that soul that doesn't know you yet, that this would be the day they open their hearts to you. Use us as you will, Lord, to spread your word. We love your word. We love you. We just want to thank you once again, Jesus, that you shed your blood, that we could be part of your family. Would you please bless this day and protect our loved ones from all evil? We ask, Lord, that you would just lead us and guide us. Help us to live a life of love, to reflect you wherever we go. 
We commit to your care the sick and the dying and all who are in need. There are so many, Lord. Have mercy. We look forward to the day when there will be a new heaven and a new earth, when all suffering will have ended. But till that day, may we patiently serve you till you call us home. So, Lord, now hear us as we join together in praying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.